John, thanks very much for coming along today. Pleasure. And you've spoken at several Safety in Action conferences. What have you learned from your attendance? Well, Kevin, from, from WorkSafe's point of view as the regulator, in order for us to be successful, we really need the, the confidence and the support of the community. And in particular, we need the support of that health and safety community. And, and we've learned over the, over the years of supporting the Safety in Action conference that if we can open up to that community, if we can be um, more transparent about the issues that we see, the things that we're trying, what's working and what's not working, then that's the best way to build the support of health and safety professionals. And I suppose that's a, that's a, a difficult step to make because they're a naturally very critical audience. They're, they're very passionate, very committed, very demanding as they should be of WorkSafe, of the regulator. And so it can be a bit intimidating, but um, we've, I think, enjoyed um, enormous support from the health and safety fraternity as a result of being a part of the conference. And there's no doubt in my mind that that makes us more effective and makes our job much easier each day. How have you improved the working conditions or the health and safety conditions of your staff in WorkSafe Victoria? Well, for us, our, our challenge is that we've got the, we've got the advantage that, that our staff are predominantly health and safety professionals. So it's the, the challenge for us is to make sure that they are empowered to use their judgment, to use their skills. And so we, we've worked very hard to try and drive um, empowerment down uh, in our organisation so that that issues that get raised can get fixed. We get very cross at our health and safety committee if we're dealing with specific health and safety issues. They should be fixed long before they have to come to a committee for someone like me to say fix it. Uh, we need our committees to be looking at the broader issues they face. So we've been doing that. Um, and we, that's important to us because large numbers of our, of, of our work safe people work alone. They're out there in the Commodore or the Ford um, in, the, in the workplace alone and dealing with an almost infinite array of issues in the workplaces they visit. We've obviously got the motor vehicle hazard is our, is our biggest exposure to traumatic injury. And we need our people to feel empowered that no matter what our, our, our policies or procedures as a regulator might say, that they should use their judgment and their professional knowledge to make sure that they manage the hazards that they experience. WorkSafe uh, bases many of its strategies on workers' compensation data. What other data sources do you have access to or would you like to have access to? Well, look, workers' comp data is always going to be important to us because it's the, it's the basis on which the national targets, for the 10-year targets that we've signed up to are written. So we, we use that, that claim count uh, as our key measure. But it's obviously uh, not perfect, it's a lag data, you know, more than half of the claims that we compensate are musculoskeletal in nature, which many of which are gradual onset and we know not that much about the lag period itself. So it's historical in nature and of course, you know, the majority of workers who get it hurt at work will not make a claim. So they're ex almost excluded from that set. So we're equally interested in terms of shaping our strategies on um, workers' um, uh, exposure to hazards, and so we survey that regularly. But increasingly, we've been building a, a social research unit within WorkSafe over the last 12 months and been recruiting into that because we want to uh, put more work into identifying the specific behaviours and attitudes that employers and workers hold which lead to, um, to incidents and be able to get baseline measures of those so that we can then test the effectiveness of our interventions over time. And This is something that we learnt from looking at other social change programs in other countries. Of, um, of all the executives that you've talked to over your time as the CEO of WorkSafe, John, uh, have you ever seen any of them have a light bulb moment or a, an epiphany about safety? Mm, well look, in my role, the conversations that I have with, with, uh, with chief executives and senior executives I, which, which result in, in that significant shift are unfortunately in, usually in the aftermath of something awful happening, someone, usually someone dying. And the conversation that I'm having with them is what they're doing about it. And, and it's certainly been my experience that many of those very senior executives come to that discussion uh, pretty committed that this, is, that this is a dreadful place to be, something they're going to live with, with the, for the rest of their lives. Um, 
and something that they're determined will not happen again. And look, unfortunately, um, as everyone in the safety you know, fraternity will know, a lot of significant health and safety improvement, a lot of companies that are really strong in this area, are ultimately, if you peel away the reasons as to why they've made that change, you'll find at the, at the heart of it, something horrible has happened. And a decision and a determination by key people to say, this is not gonna happen again. What was your uh, first job? And uh, was it a safe job? Yeah, well, look, my first job was when I was at university and uh, I worked for an ice cream company in their, uh, in their warehouse and distribution area. And I used to work there predominantly in summer when the demand was, was high. I think it was a reasonably well-run workplace, but what uh, I suppose my, what, what got me interested in then is really about the, the sort of the, the diversity of workers and their backgrounds, why they were working there, and the sort of skills and more the survival instincts, <laughs> the techniques that they bought to that sort of workplace. And I suppose that's always stimulated me to, to try and understand more about the dynamic between the person and the job and the part that work plays in people's lives has really been an underlying theme of all of my working life. I appreciate your time today. It's been a pleasure to talk to you and look forward to your keynote presentation at the Safety in Action Conference. Thanks, Kevin.